Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Spitting Fire podcast, where we talk life, leadership, and lingering topics, i.e. the topics no one really wants to talk about. So welcome back to Pastor Bill Yonaka, lead pastor here at Link Church. Pastor Bill, how are you? I'm good, Dobzy. Good to be back, man. It is great to be back. Feels like a little while since we've done one of these. Yeah, look, I mean, things have changed a few times over the last two years, but uh, hopefully Spitting Fire has been encouraging for people. I'm sure, I'm sure it has. Uh, obviously, leadership, a big deal and a big topic, not only in the current season we find ourselves, but uh, just in life. And yeah. uh, most leaders I speak to want to get better. Yeah. And uh, we're just hoping that the stuff that we chat about as a staff team, some of the thoughts you bring, some of the stuff you're learning and reading is actually helping shape uh, some leaders of the next generation. I hope so, so but because the reality is leadership's kind of hard, right? No one really wants to do it, but we all want to be it. Yeah, it takes <laughs> So uh, I guess we're just trying to bring honest conversations that help people lead better wherever yeah, absolutely. you are. So, yeah. It's amazing how you say that, that everyone wants to lead. The minute they get there, like, oh, I'm not sure this is for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Give me all the tools I need. It's like me. I quit season. every Monday, people. Always, <laughs> I quit every Monday. Tess is like, you've got to fix this. So every yeah. Monday, I'm like, I'm out. Can't and, do this anymore. And so. then Tuesday morning, you come back and fight up and get our staff team off the ground again. And uh, always uh, the most inspiring guy in the room. And always leading from the front. And uh, I think it's a quality that you possess. It's just when Appreciate you walk that. into the room. I know Paul says in the scriptures, be, be full of zeal. Mm. And I think you're a zeal guy. I think you're the hey guy man, that come walks on. into the room, lights up the room, brings the zeal, and uh, zeal sets the others a lot. So zeal, word of the day. Word of the word of the day. Zeal, zeal. The biblical word of the day is zeal. zeal. Exactly. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Skulk. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Hey, so this morning um, we had our all-in staff meeting, which we do yeah. once a month now. Obviously, with our team growing and departments growing, we've split that uh, over the last uh, few months. Yeah. Uh, into a few different meetings. But once a month, we all get together as a staff team. You bring something to encourage the guys. And this morning was phenomenal. Thank you. So uh, It was as, good to be back with the team, actually. It was so good to be back I together as a team. Moments. And uh, yeah, really cool. Team's in a great space, yeah. even though we find ourselves in difficult situations. Our team have done so well. They have. Uh, they have. They've, they've really, been exceptional. So um, a call to lead with calm, confidence, and clarity. And as you started to chat through this this morning, I was like, man, we need to jump on this and podcast it straight away. Because I believe it's going to be so helpful for everyone out there. Awesome. And... Uh, I want to chat, uh, John C. Maxwell. Leadership is influence. <laughs> the leadership guru. Yeah, the leadership, leadership is influence. Yeah, guru. And uh, he's summed up leadership really simply. And uh, he's made it sound really easy. It's not as easy as made it sound. But uh, leadership is influence, nothing more or nothing less. And you yeah. broke that down a little bit for us to try and uh, find out how to help us lead with the influence we carry. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts you want to share or jump into straight away? Yeah, I mean, I love John Maxwell because he does make leadership simple. Doesn't make it easy, but it makes mm. it simple. And uh, that's been a, sub, a kind of statement that he's always anchored himself on. Leadership is influence. Nothing yep. more, nothing less. So looked at influence this morning with a team and just spoke about how to influence something is to affect its character yep. or development or behavior. And behavior was like the big one that I drew down on because behavior is what creates culture. Yeah. And so when you lead well, you create healthy cultures. So good. Because uh, you're affecting good behaviors. And yeah. so, yeah, in its essence, leadership is just shaping in people, parents to children, uh, teams to one another, leaders to their, their, their teams around them, uh, shaping better behavior that produces good culture that so ultimately good. leads great organizations. So, yeah. That's brilliant because I've always looked at that statement and gone like, how do I use my influence to, mm. to impact people? But that just broke it down for me. Character, development, and behavior. Yeah. If we start influencing and using our influence on others in those three areas, uh, we're going to start seeing growth in others, but uh, a, a great momentum within the organization. Totally. And I think, you know, with leadership, people often think, uh, how do I get people to do things? Yeah. I don't know that that's the call of leadership. I think leadership is this call to help people become something, like to become a better version of themselves, to become stronger in society, to become better parents. So you're not trying to get someone to do something. Yeah. You're affecting their character and their development and their behaviors to become something. So good. So yeah, that's the goal of leadership, I guess. And uh, I know everyone's probably exhausted hearing about uh, the pandemic and yeah. where we find ourselves and how to lead and how to change and how to pivot for, for a better sense <laughs> of word. 2021 pivot. 2021, 2020 word of the year pivot. 2021 <laughs> word of the year. Pivot. Back again. 2022. We're not pivoting 2022 because I'm believing for incredible breakthroughs. We are pioneering 2022. Come on. We're believing for vaccines and I hear the UK going back to some some sort of normal. um, Yes. Good to see stadiums full again. Sport events happening. And uh, I know Boris Johnson said 19th of July, pulling the plug on all restrictions. Masks, working from home. So they are excited, even though they feel like the curve's still on the app. But. there's a guy who's leading That's with influence and decision. making a courageous decision. And yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what transpires. But uh, one of the ways that we can use our influence in the season is to break behaviors. Yeah. And uh, I love the way you said it. You said break the behavior because COVID is just a moment. 
Yeah. How does that shape your thinking uh, in leading in this space? Well, I guess behavior is something that we, it's a, it's a learned behavior uh, by way of how we see the world. So we spoke about this, like fear is a massive factor in how we behave towards certain things. So fear sets the boundaries of your life. So yep. for example, if you're fearful of heights, you never go up. Brilliant. If you're fearful of drowning, you never get in the deep. If you're fearful of speed, you never go fast. And so there's just, there's something about the fear that produces a behavior. We become conservative in our hearts. We become, you mentioned heart can be quite contextual, yep. like an organization. If you fear growing in your leadership or fear going somewhere you've never been before, you never climb, you never go further. So good. So your fear establishes the boundaries of our lives, whereas faith breaks the boundaries. Sure. Faith takes us like Abraham left the comforts of his homeland and went into a new space, faith. Yep. Fear would have been, I'm too scared to leave here. It's all I know. Sure. And I think with COVID, there's a lot of fear. Well, we don't think, we know. There's yep. a lot of fear. Absolutely. People are not just avoiding heights, they're not even leaving their homes. Yeah. Uh, they're pulling back on how they invest their resource. They, they're changing the way they see their children's future. They're getting scared of their kids' future before it's even come. Yeah. And so fear is establishing behaviors. And so I spoke about how our greatest gift to the world in this moment is to influence faithful behaviors Brilliant. to help people go up, get deep, uh, reach further, wider, believe for bigger, uh, but to influence that way of life by way of how yeah. we lead. And uh, how, how could we do that practically? Let's talk very practical. How do we influence people's uh, thinking around this idea of fear? Because the reality is fear is here to stay. I don't yeah. think it's something that's, uh, you click your fingers and fear is gone. Yeah. But how do we build faith into those moments? Yeah, good question. I think like fear is, I love it how the Bible says we've, I mean, we can experience fear. We just don't carry a spirit of it. Like the yep. Bible says, if we're not being given a spirit of fear, spirit is something that you live with, right? Yeah. And so I think fear, if it's momentary, just it's okay. Just take a deep breath, look aside. But when it's governing the boundaries and the behaviors of your life, well, now we've got a problem on our hands. So we spoke about how as a team, we can influence people's behaviors in a positive way through faithful behaviors by speaking life into them. Championing God breathed living. Come on. Is champion. the language we use. Yeah. God breathed living. And I love Ephesians 1.23. I know it's a scripture that Absolutely. you quote often. Uh, at the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church you see is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. It's not changing us. We're changing we're, it. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you said that fear is temporary, but faith is here for a long time. Yeah. So fear is temporary, faith is here for a long time. Champion, God breathed, living, speaking directly into those moments. And what an fear. opportunity. Like what an opportunity. Yeah. people's ears are like open, right? Their hearts are open, ears are open, their appetites up because we're all looking for a way through this, like a good way through this. Yeah. And the truth is like we're all in the same boat, but faith gets right in the middle of that. Like God's word gets in the middle of chaos, calms storms, opens doors, parts seas. Uh, and I just think we carry that, you know? So our, our responsibility in this moment is to influence the world, yep. to shape their thinking, their behavior, their attitude toward life, by bringing God's word and good stories of how he's changing people's lives to their world. So good. I want to jump down a little bit and go into um, the three C's. Yes. Because that's something that's uh, it's come up in a couple of the podcasts. It's something that we've been talking about consistently as a church. Yeah. Uh, the first one of those is consistency. And I love the fact that you said uh, stories. Yeah. Because three other ways that we are um, connecting with our people in the season are, are through Sundays. Yeah. We do great Sundays as a church and it's something we'll continue to do. You should come and join us for a Sunday you, if you're watching this. You should. You should just jump online at linkchurch.com or on YouTube, Link Church, or on Facebook Live, Link Church, and yeah. come and join us for a service. Um, small groups is another way that we study. Absolutely. And community matters. Community matters. So we are in different groups uh, within our community and some of them are interests, some of them are just in homes, Yeah. A traditional home group, if you like. And then some of them are in smaller groups, little pockets, uh, triads, meeting in threes, triads. thinking in threes, trying to keep momentum. Um, yeah, I think it's encouraging to say to anyone, just doesn't matter how you meet with people, do it. Yeah. Like create a group somewhere at your business, stop, say hi, encourage somebody, champion the God breathe life in them. Because yeah. again, fear is setting their boundaries. So the whole reason we're trying to bring groups and Sundays and scriptures and stories to life is to go, we want to, we want to champion God breathe lives that break the fear boundaries and get you to live in the bigness that you were called to. So good. So keep showing up That's would it. be something that we would say is that just keep showing up. And some of the ways uh, you were something, some of the ways you were chatting through it is like, don't go silent on the people. Yeah. Don't go silent on those who, uh, who rely on you or who you have influence over or 
who are just you're connecting with on a regular basis. Yeah. I think in this season, it's easy for us to pull back and not speak faith into there. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on not going silent? Yeah, there's this cool scripture. I think it's Acts 4 uh, where Peter's kind of being questioned by the Sanhedrin and he goes like, whatever happens to us is one thing, but we cannot stay silent about what we've seen and heard. Brilliant. And I think that's what I'm talking about with don't go silent. Like I'm a pastor, right? So sometimes when I'm thinking of someone or God puts someone in my heart that I haven't seen for a while or yep. that someone came up in conversation, I'm like, I should send them some encouragement. And then I have this like fearful moment, which is, yeah, you're just doing that because you're a pastor. That's your job. Like they're not even going to see it as authentic. And then sometimes I don't do it. And I'm saying like, that's the point. Don't be silent. Brilliant. Do it. Like when someone's put on your heart, when God uh, brings someone up in conversation and you know you're meant to give them a call or send them something, like go after it. Like say something encouraging, champion that God breathed life. Come on. Business guys like this too. Like if you're in business, you know what it's like, right? So you know someone could do with some encouragement in their business. And then you have this like fear moment where you're like, oh, but then they're going to think, I think I know what I'm doing and they don't. And and so maybe I shouldn't say anything at all. I'm like, no, if you see someone in business and they could do with a word of encouragement or a thought or a gesture, like don't stay silent. Champion their God breathe story. Go after it. I love the practical advice you gave us as well. You said, have a story and a scripture ready to go. Yeah. What's God saying to you and what can you be sharing? How can you be sharing that with other people? And also the stories. What stories do you have yeah. that you can connect and uh, light people up with and uh, actually champion God breathed living in a very practical way? Always have a story and always have a scripture ready to go. And even if it's a WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Because you know what the cool thing about stories and scriptures is that's where the authority is. It says they overcame by the power of the word uh, or the lamb and the word of the testimony. Yep. So the authority is in God's word and our stories, our testimonies. So yeah, whether you're sending a WhatsApp, whether you're chatting to someone over a coffee, like just have a story that's going to encourage them and a scripture that's burning in your heart. And don't be scared to share the same scripture a hundred times. Yeah. It works. God's word works. God's know? word lights people up. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. Connection. Um, to speak to the heart. And we've created many moments as a church through this season where we're not gathering as such in large crowds, but there's lo- loads of different moments, prayer moments. Yeah. Uh, we're having communion moments together. We're doing oh, I a little, love those communion uh, moments. We, we've had we had a, we had an awesome one this morning, just yeah. uh, chatting to f- um, a few guys on Instagram Live and having a moment together just to share communion, um, live interactions, uh, dinners together. There's so many different ways we yeah. can connect in this season. We're just encouraging everyone out there. Like, yeah, just get on your phones, connect with guys and say how's it. Take a moment. Take a moment. Get around the coffee table. Go have a game of golf. Whatever that yeah. looks like. Just make sure that you're looking out for those around you and making sure that guys are being looked after in the season. And you know, we spoke about how champion God breathed living, what it brings is faith and leadership to fear. Yep. Breaks fear, it sets up new boundaries for people, bigger boundaries. So you think about a coffee or you think about a game of golf or you think about a dinner at your house, whatever it looks like, lead the moment. Yep. So stop, pause, take a moment. Hey guys, just before we eat tonight, I just want to honor you, Dubsy. I want to thank you for what you've brought to our lives. God's scripture reminds me of who you are to me. So thank you. I just want to honor you, name. And yeah. so you just have a moment to go, all right, guys, let's eat those people will never forget that moment. That could happen at business. That could happen on the golf course. That could happen in a WhatsApp message. But when you celebrate the God story in somebody else's life, oh, boundaries get bigger. So good. I once heard a quote that said, the leader is the man or woman in the moment that takes responsibility. There we go. Take responsibility in those moments to jump on and uh, speak, laugh, encourage, and gifting over those who are sitting around you. Influence it for the positive. Come on. Influence. Leadership is influence. Nothing more. Nothing less. Uh, the last one, cre- uh, creative courage, uh, light up the human soul. Um, behind the scenes moments, short courses, so many yeah. little moments that are, are popping up creatively in this in these seasons. And we want people to connect. We want people to uh, to lean in, to comment, not only just watch and uh, receive, but also participate. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, some of those creative things like breakfast shows back. Yep. <laughs> you should join us Friday <laughs> mornings. Back. What is it, 8 a.m. Friday mornings? 8 a.m. on a Friday morning. Uh, it's just 20 minutes, and it's obviously just hot topics that are happening. We're going to get a few guests on the show and what's Brilliant. coming up in the life of church, what we've been up to, um, and really cool moments, like Love Week coming up in a couple of weeks' time. So, yep. um, Talking about that on Friday. Talking about that this week, Friday, and hoping to get the organization that we're partnering with for uh, the People Movement Walk. Come uh, on. Building a safe house here on the North Coast for um, those who are affected by- um, Yeah, abused women or women in abuse. Yep, women yeah. abuse. So uh, it's going to be cool to have them on the show and just find out what they're up to and see how we can partner with them. Keep yeah. Going. So breakfast show. Don't miss the breakfast Do show. Do not miss the breakfast show. Kinners will be back driving the ship. He will be steering the ship behind us. If we have power- yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. UPS. Anyone out there with a UPS, you want to donate the church, we will receive with we open will arms. receive a UPS. Amen. Awesome. Um, 
God is calling the church to lead through lockdown. And, That's it, uh, bud. We, any, any final thoughts or parting shots before we wrap up today that you just want to leave or drop with any leader out there leading into this message? I think you said it well. Ephesians 1.23, the world is not peripheral to the church, or the church is not peripheral to the world. The world's peripheral to the church. So rather than us responding to everything that the world is throwing at us in this season, yeah. let us respond to our inner world. Like right. let's take the word of God that's inside us and let it affect the world around us rather than the world around us affecting the word that's inside us. So good. So you've got something in your spirit, take it into your world. Get into the Bible, uh, ask God to speak to you, even if it's one scripture that you're excited about. Take that into your business meetings, take that into your family circles, take that into your teams, whatever, and watch what God does with the word from the inside affecting the outside. So good. Thank you, Pastor Dill, for this little catch-up. It's been awesome. Just helping guys lead better um, in the season of COVID. So thanks for your time. Absolute pleasure. Hey, so if you've enjoyed today's content, I want to ask you to please like, comment, and share. And why don't you hit the notification bell so every time a podcast goes live on Pastor Dill's Leadership Podcast, uh, you'll be notified. Also, you can check out some more content from his podcast over here. And his incredible wife, Tess Yannick, has a podcast available too. Click on here for some of her content. Thanks for joining us today. It's been awesome here on the Spinning Fire Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Ciao, ciao.